Hey guys, it's Conrad back with another video. Today we're going to be going over the easiest way to create custom made AI assistants for your business. You know, like those chatbots you see on almost every website these days. Thanks to our sponsor, GPT Bots, we're going to be diving into how you can quickly and effortlessly build complex chatbots to enhance your business, drive sales, and increase customer satisfaction. So without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, we're going to go to gptbots.ai to get started. And then next, we're going to click Get Started. And you see I've already logged into my account, but obviously you might need to create one. And you see right here we have the developer portal where we have all these different things that we can do with our bots. And so to get started, we're going to create a new bot. And you see right here we have all of these different templates that we can use that do all sorts of really cool things. Today, just to sort of show you the functionality of gptbots.ai, we're going to be creating from a blank. So we're going to be creating a bot from scratch. And so our bot name, let's say the title of our company is serviceorg. So we'll say serviceorg bot. And then the bot introduction is where we basically describe to the bot what it's supposed to do. So we'll say a bot that gives relevant information to users about service org. All right, we'll say create. And then right here we are in our bot settings. So you see right here we have a lot of different options that we can play around with. First, the large language model that the bot will be based on. And in all honesty, all of these are great options, but ChatGPT 3.5 with a 16K token window is fine. Right here we have the temperature, and the temperature of the bot is basically how creative the bot is going to be. So a temperature of zero means that the bot is getting very standard, run-of-the-mill answers, it's not very creative. And then a uh, temperature of one is like the bot is making wilder answers that are maybe a little bit less based on the training data. So for now we'll leave this at 0.3. Maximum response length, this is in tokens, and so one token is about one short English word. And for that, we'll just set it at 1024, that's plenty. And then context allocation, this is where the bot is getting its answers from. So right now we have 15% from the short-term memory. We have 10% from the identity prompt, which we just can define below. We have 50% from the knowledge base, which we'll upload later and then we have 25% from user input. So the identity prompt here, we can set an identity, and basically we're just telling the bot exactly what it is, what it's supposed to be doing. And so really this is where the magic happens because this is where we're telling our bot who it is and how it should act. So for instance, we should say something like, you are a customer service bot that helps people know about the company's pricing policies and other useful information. And now obviously if you have more info on how you want your bot to act, you'll have to put down just a lot more info here. But since we're kind of just making a general bot to practice, that's why I only used one sentence. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to under knowledge. We're going to click documents. We'll save what we have so far. And here you say uh, we can actually add documents. And so these documents are part of, if we go back to our config, that 50% knowledge base. So we can upload things like files, spreadsheets, just info straight from our website, online text, a Q&A, how we want the bot to act, something from Google Drive, or something even from another bot. So this is where we're gonna put down all the information that the bot is going to be communicating. Next, we can also run retrieval tests. We can look at the chat history, and obviously no one's used our bot yet, so we don't have a lot of history on the chat. But if we say, find something that we don't like, we can very easily go back to the knowledge or to the config, and we can chat with our bot here and make it better and correct it and help it improve. Last but not least, we have integrations. And this is where everything happens because once you have your bot, it's time to actually implement it to your 
website or whatever it is. So you can turn on this API and you see if we go to manage, you can create a new API key or even go to the documentation and GPT bots AI has all this really useful documentation for how to call on your bot that you created in your website or whatever it is. Going back to our service org bot, if we go to integrations, you see we can also share the bot. We can create an iframe or a bubble widget. If I turn that on and manage it, you can see right here we can change the theme color. We can change the bot introduction. We can even change its icon, the avatar that it's going to be using, make it custom or not, and then just add it to our website like that. Another thing that we can do is if we want our bot to work, maybe not on a website, but through WhatsApp or Slack or Discord or anything like that, we can do that as well by turning these on and then implementing it that way. So yeah, there you go. You see in just a couple minutes, we can get up and running with our own custom AI chatbot. How cool is that? But perhaps the best part of all this is that it's free to get started. Yep, you heard me right. So whether you're running your own business or helping out other businesses get a jump start with AI, GPT Bots is the way to go. It just doesn't get easier than this. So make sure to check out the link in the description to get started building custom AI chatbots today. Thank you all so much for watching this video and thanks again to our sponsor gptbots.ai. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.